build the house and she had uh, about three to five minutes to take some uh, goods, uh, some things that she really wanted out. Well, as you know, you can't do much in that time. Although she had a few ladies from the village giving her a hand, she went down to plead to one of the officers. Uh, she happened to be upstairs in the bedroom. He just kicked her down the stairs. What happened then? They just uh, set uh, a fire in each room, 12 fires. The partisan was nagging them on the, on the main road, you see. So what happened, the Germans took the place over, about 20,000 men, I should think. They invaded the place, from all the place. And of course, that's where they shot a lot of people, which happened to be a war is a war anyway. It was very, very hot. When I reached, before I reached Sidolo, I found the six men on the field. And uh, I said, what are you doing? He said, they are prisoners. Then I went over again by the river with the tree trees. And on the side of the road was the German SS ready to shoot these tree trees. I could just ask, why did they doing this? He said, because we have anyone passing through. The Germans were drunk. They were playing uh, the other kind of, uh, it was, I should think, gramophone. Because uh, the priest said to me, don't, don't stop, go away. I went to, I went to, house when my mother was there with all the nephews and uh, they closed the door and soon the, uh, we heard the shooting for the, the three trees first and then the, the other men after. I went down with my sister and the whole lady and we took up the three trees and we took them to the parish. The two priests, the two elder ones, died straight away. But the, the, other, the young one, he couldn't, he was just trying to say something to me that I couldn't understand. I could see the sky getting black and lightning, quite heavy rain going to the bodies. It was like Christ died, you know. After the war, life slowly returned to normal. Those remaining in the internment camps came home to their cafes and shops in Wales. Now, our accents are Welsh. We are part of the Welsh community. But we've never forgotten our roots. <laughs> A lot of them came over when they were about 12 years of age. Really, the, their land, I would imagine, is Wales, because they were born here all their life, quite a lot of them, including my father, and many, many more have died in this country. They were never sent back to Italy because they wanted to stop in a land that they have lived there more of most of their life. In fact, the younger generation, a lot of them can't even speak Italian or anything, which is a pity. Once you lose culture or language, the same as the Welsh did, and uh, it's a pity. Although our lives are now rooted in the valleys, it's hard to stay away from Bardi. Right, 
comes out to me a lot now. Uh, I'm more at home speaking English, which is my mother language, and speaking Italian. My father buried here, and uh, all the family, my, my mother's side um, family. And I've and got a nice memory in here because uh, I come home and I see my friends, all my family, definitely, <laughs> and my friends, and uh, I like to see them. But I like to go back in, over to, to Wales in, in Ebbyvale. And my family always laugh at me because uh, when I leave Ebbyvale, I cry. And when I leave Bardi, uh, it's the same. <laughs> I cry. <laughs> Abbeville and um, Bardi. <laughs> yeah, really. It was very nice to come back. And very nice to go back. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah
I was born in Abbeville, and in Abbeville I want to stay. It is nice to go back for a little holiday from where your route started. I go to Bardi, and I'm a Welshman. I come to Abbeville, and I'm an Italian, so I don't know what I am. But anyway, I'm very, very happy the way that life has gone on in Abbeville. That was the final film in the series on homelands. Open Space will be back at the end of September.